Uh, hi everyone, today I wanna to look at uh, the book stacking problem. This is kind of an old problem, but it's a rather interesting one. So you start off with a table, you place your favorite book on it, and you place it so the book is completely on the surface of the table. And now you move the book over to the edge so part of it is hanging over the edge of the table, and you see how far you can push that book until, oops, it falls over. But you don't want it to fall over, so you stop just before. So how can we calculate how much overhang I can have if I only have one book? Now the next question that follows, what happens if I have two books? Can I actually have more overhang? And if so, how much? What's the maximum amount of overhang I can have uh, if I have two books? How about three books? How about four books? And the last question I have is, is it actually possible if the length of each book is L, is it actually possible to have an amount of overhang that's longer than the actual length of one of the books? Let's see if we can actually do that and what, what it would look like. Here are a few other examples of some stacking that I found on the web. Uh, here are 10 encyclopedias stacked one on top of each other. Again, you get quite a bit of overhang. Uh, you could do it also with playing cards. Actually, if you look at the case with playing cards, you can see that certainly the amount of overhang you get over here is much larger than the length of that one playing card. Hell, you can even do it with biscuits. And look, at even with biscuits, you seem to get about the same amount of overhang as the diameter of one of those biscuits. So pretty cool. All right, let's look at the physics problem now and see how you solve this. All right, so we're going to consider blocks that have a length L. Each block is also going to have a mass M. And here are four different cases. Well, case number one, the block is simply sitting right over the table. Clearly that one's gonna be stable. Uh, block number two, I only have a little bit of overhang here. That one's probably also going to be stable. Uh, block number three, look at it. <laughs> Most of the block is kind of hanging over the edge. That one's not gonna be too stable. Number four is probably the limiting case, right? Without writing down any equations that you could probably guess, that's about as far as you could push one block over the edge without tipping it over. Now the key to all these problems here is to find the position of the center of mass. And if there's only one block, that's very easy. It's right at its geometrical center because the mass is uniformly distributed. Now this one, I already have it. And this one here is right at the corner. So again, that means you can represent the entire weight of the object as acting down right at the center of mass. Likewise with this one, we have the weight acting down. Likewise with this one, weight acting down. Oh, you see what happens here, right? Since the weight is acting down, you can imagine placing a little pivot here, and now the weight is going to produce a torque, and that's gonna make the object rotate clockwise like this. Over here, again, we've simplified this block, and we can represent it by a single point at its center of mass, and as long as that center of mass is just slightly to the left of the corner of the table, this system will be stable. Okay, so for a single block, the amount, the maximum amount of overhang uh, you can have is simply half the length. Okay, so let's have a look now if I have a second block. So here's the situation with two blocks. Uh, the case on the left hand side over here, I just wanted to illustrate uh, because it's kind of like the first problem that we saw. So again, the top block can only be a distance L over 2 hanging off the bottom block because otherwise the top block's gonna be unstable. And that's because its center of mass, again, is gonna be right over the edge here, so that's gonna be okay. Now the center of mass of the bottom block is right here. It's right at its geometrical center. Now what we're really interested in is, is where is the center of mass of the entire system? And if these are uniform blocks, well, it's gonna be somewhere over here. Let's just draw it in the center. This is the center of mass of both blocks. Okay, so how do we calculate center of mass? Well, remember the formula for calculating center of mass, if you have more than one object, and again, each one of these simply reduces to a point mass, is you simply sum up the masses and you sum up their positions with respect to some coordinate system. And then you can't forget to divide by the total mass of the system. So this is gonna be very easy to evaluate for us. So we've only got two objects. And now the key is I can push, this is the center of mass of the entire system. So I can move both of these blocks together right up until the center of mass is right at this position. And when the center of mass is right at this position, 
as long as it's not over the edge of the table, the system will remain in equilibrium. So let's calculate where this position of the center of mass is. Now, the first thing you have to realize is we have to pick what are going to be our XIs. That's the distance of each individual mass with respect to some coordinate system. So what's the coordinate system? We have to put a zero somewhere. So actually, I'm going to calculate it here with respect to uh, the edge of the top block. This is going to be the zero distance. Everything pointing to uh, the left here is going to be some positive value. That's going to be positive X. Okay, so let's see how we do that. So the position of the center of mass is going to be it's the mass of the top block and the position of the center of mass of the top block plus the mass of the bottom block multiplied by the position of the center of mass of the bottom block. And all of this has to be divided by the total mass. Uh, so that's mass of the top plus mass of the bottom. All right, now we could substitute some values. Well, the mass of each block is m, so that's very easy, that's m. <laughs> now, what is the position of the center of mass of the top block with respect to the zero? We know it's right here at the center. So that's a distance l over two away. So this here must be l over two. Plus, what's the mass of the bottom one is still m. That's very easy. Now, what's the position of its center of mass? Again, we're calculating here with respect to, to the edge. <laughs> Well, it's position of the center of mass. Look at it, it's actually a distance L away, right? So that simply goes as L. And now at the end, you have to divide by the total mass, which in this case is simply 2M. So we have M's in the numerator in all the terms and an M in the denominator. You simply cross them out. Now be a little bit careful here. So we have L over two plus one L, that's three L over two and divided by two, at the end you should get three L over four. So this overhang position here, X of the center of mass, is basically three L over four. Notice this is less than the length of one of the blocks, but you can still get it farther than having only a single block, right? We're able to push that out another L over four. So you're able to get a little bit of extra overhang if you use two blocks and you arrange them like this. All right, let's have a look at the three block case now. All right, here's the three block case. Now, keep in mind, every time we do one of these, we've already, we can use the previous information. Remember, we've just done the case with the top two blocks. And we found that the center of mass was of the top two blocks was right here. And we also found that that was a distance of, remember, 3L over 4 away from the edge here. So clearly we can't move the top two blocks any more to the right because the center of mass of those top two blocks have to be over the corner of this bottom block now. Likewise, the top block has to be L over 2 because it, if it goes any more, then the top block's going to be unstable. So the question is now, if we have three blocks, it's the same problem that repeats itself. What we want now is we want to find where is the position of the center of mass of the three block system. And for the three block system, I'm just going to draw it over here. But what we want is we want to place the position of the center of mass, X center of mass of three blocks right there at the position of the corner. And as long as it's slightly to the left of the corner, the system will remain stable. So let's now find the position of the center of mass of the three blocks. Again, we have to pick a zero somewhere. Again, I can do it, say, with respect to, um, say, to down over here. Same thing as what I did previously. So this is going to be the zero position, and then I'm going to find a position of the center of mass that way. Now, I've already done the first two blocks, so you really don't have to redo that case, but we can anyway. So again, it's the same formula. Position of the center of mass. Again, let's just start with the denominator. That's the easiest one. It's the total mass of the system. Total mass of the system. Each block has a mass m. That's simply 3m. All right, now, if you look at the first block, the first block, its position of the center of mass is right at the center, and that's a distance l over 2. So you have m, and it's a distance l over 2 away. <laughs> then what do you have? Well, you have another block, right? We have another block right here. It has a mass m. 
and its position of its center of mass is right here at its center. And that's a distance L away uh, from our zero position. So that's simply L. And now what about the third block? Well, the third block now, this one you gotta be a little bit more tricky. Its center of mass is still right at its geometrical center, which is right here. Um, and the way I'm gonna write that now is, let me write it out like this. So we have the mass M. Now look at how far that distance is away from, from the center. Might not be that obvious here, but let me write it out like this. This is gonna be three L over four. That's the distance of the red here. Remember that distance here goes all the way to the edge of that bottom block. And plus half the length of that bottom block. So that's the position of its center of mass with respect to the origin here, which I've taken to be the most right, uh, right edge of the top book. All right, so here we have 3L over 4 plus L over 2. All right, now we have to combine all the terms. Uh, we have masses everywhere. Let's get rid of those. All right, now we have to do a little bit of math. So again, we're going to have L over 2 here plus L. That gives me 3L over 2 plus 3L over 4. And plus L over two, now let's just put that like this, L over two, and all of this divided by three. All right, the last thing, I'll just put everything on a common denominator here. If I put everything on four, uh, what are you gonna get? You're gonna get six L over four, plus three L over four, plus two L over four. Again, everything here is divided by three. So at the end, um, what do we get? We have 6L plus 3L, that's 9, plus 2 gives me 11L. And everything now becomes, it's not over 4 because let's just take care of this 3, so that becomes over 12. So that's the position of the center of mass now. It's not quite the full length, but it almost is. Actually, this drawing is really not that accurate. Uh, but here's the position of the center of mass of the three-block system. That's really the maximum overhang that I can have, right? If I have any more overhang, that means this green dot is gonna be slightly over the edge and the entire system is gonna be unstable here. So this guy here is 11L over 12. So pretty good, we first started with one block, it was L over two. With two blocks, I went to three quarters of a length and now I'm at 11 twelfths. So let's have a look at the last case, which is the four block case that I wanna look at today and see what it looks like. All right, so here's the last case I wanna consider is four blocks. And you know, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently for this case. So again, we're gonna use the same origin as what I previously did. So again, that's the zero here is gonna be zero with respect to the rightmost uh, position of the top block. And now we'll, we've already solved <laughs> the top three blocks. We just did that problem. So let's use that to our advantage. We know that the top three blocks have a mass of 3m. And we know that the position of the center of mass of the top three blocks, let me just put it here, but we know that that there is a distance of 11L over 12. We just found that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and use that to our advantage to simplify the problem. Just like we did before now, the top three blocks, we can't place them any more to the right with respect to the corner or the edge of this bottom block because then the top three blocks would become unstable and everything would topple over. So we have to keep the center of mass of the top three blocks right here where this red line here is shown. Now the question is now the four blocks, they can move a little bit to the right and we have to figure out how much. And again, I'm just gonna plot the center of mass of this bottom block that I've added here. And really what we're looking for here is what is this overhang here? What is this overhang X? And just like we did before, basically what you want is you want the center of mass of the four blocks, I'll do this in orange, but as long as the center of mass of the four blocks is right here over the edge of the table now in this case, the system is going to be stable. So let this here be the position of the center of mass of four blocks. 
So the simplest way to calculate this, well, let's just, rather than doing the sum including four different terms, let's just group all the top three together since we've already done that. And now if I use that in my equation, so this problem simplifies to simply two point masses. I group the top three together, they have a mass of 3m. The position of the center of mass of the top three blocks with respect to the zero being here, we've already calculated that. It's 11L over 12. Plus, now I gotta consider the bottom block. So the bottom block, you just gotta be a little bit more careful. And let me show you why. Let me just extend a line here that goes kind of almost vertical, straight. <laughs> versus with respect to the origin, which is here. Now remember what I need in my center of mass equation is I need to figure out what is this distance from the origin to the position of the center of mass of my object. So in this case, it's gonna be 11L over 12, plus that gets me right here to the edge of the block, plus L over two. Okay, so now we can now add its contribution to the center of mass. So the bottom block here has a mass M, and the position of the center of mass of the bottom block with respect to the origin being all the way out here on the right. This might not be the best case for this problem. There's probably a better way to do this, but um, I just want it to be kind of uniform with the rest of the problems. All right, so that's it. Now we can't forget to divide by the total mass of the system, which in this case is gonna be 3M plus M, 4M. Uh, M's are everywhere, you can get rid of those. Get rid, chuck them. All right, so what are we left with? Well, we're left with the position of the center of mass is going to be equal. Three times 11 gives me 33 uh, L over 12. Plus, this is 11 L over 12. If I put this over 12, it's six over 12. So 11 plus six gives me 17 L over 12. And again, I can't forget to divide by four, right? The total mass of the system. All right, this simplifies nicely. Uh, 33 plus 17 is 50 times L, and divided by uh, 12 times four gives me 48. Now you can divide both things by two, and at the end what we find is that the position of the center of mass at this value X is simply gonna be equal to 25L over 24, okay? So that's this distance x for it to remain stable. Now, what's remarkable at this is that with four blocks, with three blocks, I got to 11L over 12. That was a little bit shorter than the actual length of one of those blocks. All right, the length of one of those blocks was L. <laughs> and look at with four blocks, I'm actually able to get a number that is bigger, right? Look at the x center of mass of this guy. 25 L over 24. This is actually bigger than L by a little bit, by one over 24. So that means you're gonna have a little bit of spacing here. You have more overhang uh, than the actual length of the block, which is kind of remarkable. Now you can continue this process with five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks, and the process is always the same. Um, Clearly, you could see that every time you add a new block, you can only move it a little bit more, right? <laughs> Initially, we're able to move it L over 2, then only a little bit more, L over 4, and so forth. Anyway, there it is, folks. There's the problem I wanted to do today. It's the uh, hangover physics problem or the calculate the overhang problem. Kind of a fun problem. I would also suggest you try it with some books at home. You can use the same type of books if you can. See if it kind of reproduces what we found here today. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. If you like the channel, please like the video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions, never hesitate to reach out to me. I'll see what I can do to help you.